uh, the second speaker is uh, uh, Yuko Kuriki. Uh, yeah, she uh, yeah, she's a research associate at the University of Tokyo. Her research includes optimization, machine learning, and data mining, especially related to graph problems. She re received her PhD from the University of Tokyo under the supervision of Professor uh, Masashi uh, Sujiyama with a Dean's Award for Outstanding Achievement. She is also a visiting scientist at uh, uh, Riken Center for Advanced wow. Intelligence Project. Okay, yeah, so yeah, Yuko, if you are ready, you can yeah, start. Yeah, thank you for a great introduction, Professor Shirley. So uh, can you see my screen? Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. So thank you. So hello, everyone. I'm Yuko Kuroki from the University of Tokyo. So thank you very much for having me today. It's a precious opportunity. So my research uh, background includes studies, cloud machine learning, community optimization, and graph mining. So since 2020, I, uh, I am supported by Microsoft Research Asia Collaborative Research Program, where I was fortunate to collaborate with Professor Chen. Today, it is a great honor to give a talk about work on combinatorial bandit with Lim Del Feedback. Okay, so uh, we are interested in decision making with combinatorial action. Combinatorial optimization is one of the fundamental research fields that has been extremely studied in theoretical computer science and operations research. In such a classical framework for combinatorial optimization, it is commonly assumed that input parameters such as edge weight are exactly known. However, in recent application, input parameters might be initially unknown or ascendant. Therefore, they must be learned over time based on the past information. So in this talk, we focus on combinatorial bandit problem to resolve such uncertainty. Yeah. So what is the combinatorial bandit? So as we have just had Professor Ron Ford's Ron Wolfgang's great talk, March and Bandit problem is a decision making model where agents will interact with unknown, uh, unknown environment. The problem of combinatorial bandit is a generalization of March and Bandit problem, which considers combinatorial actions. So our subset, subset of underlying base arm called the super arm is an action in this model. In the stochastic combinatorial bandit framework, outcomes from super arm are assumed to follow the unknown probability distribution. So at each round, an agent pulls one super arm, and the outcome depending on the pulled super arm are revealed as feedback. The most well studied objective is to minimize the cumulative regret. Another popular objective is to identify the best super R with the maximum expected reward using as few exploration runs as possible. In this talk, we focus on pure exploration objective. So there are a large body of work uh, on combinatorial pure exploration since uh, 2014. Earlier work assumed that the outcome from each individual edge is always accessible at all runs or has studied the semi bounding feedback, in which after putting a super arm, random feedback from each component in the super arm is observed. However, due to practical constraints such as the budget saving or privacy concern, such strong feedback is not always available in recent applications. To avoid such critical limitation, we need a method based on weak feedback. In human feedback, after putting a super arm XD, the agent only observes the total sum of the random feedback in the pulled super arm. In the case where our reward function is linear, then this problem is a special case of the best arm identification in linear bandit. However, no existing algorithm for linear bandits can solve combinatorial setting efficiently since size of the action space here is exponentially large. So this is a formal definition of combinatorial pure exploration. So we are given a set of base arm and uh, let denotes a uh, uh, calculus x denotes a combinatorial action space. Uh, this is a family of indicator vectors of matching or spanning tree or path. So 
this combinatorial action space is defined by the given combinatorial constraint. So theta is an unknown latent vector. At each round p, the agent will choose one super arm xd, then she will observe the random river depending on the chosen xd. Let x star be the maximum expected river and out be the output of output of the algorithm. So fixed confidence setting uh, is formulated as follows. So we are given confidence parameter delta, then the agent must guarantee that probability that output is optimal super arm with high probability. Here, the evaluation metric is the number of samples that, agent, that the agent used the output. This is called the sample complexity. So another objective called the fixed value setting is formulated as follows, given the sampling budget T, then the agent minimizes the error probability. So, yeah, this is a big picture of our current development. Our aim to uh, develop a computationally efficient algorithm and deal with weak field bank. So we have investigated the combinatorial field acceleration with field bank field work in contrast to in contrast to individual samples or same bandy feedback. So we also studied the graph learning problem as one of the specific instance uh, called the densest subgraph problem in bandy setting. Then we further propose a general framework which considers nonlinear reward or partial linear feedback. In this talk, uh, I will cover the two works part of my PhD thesis and collaborative research with Microsoft will be tackled with the combinatorial pure expression is very limited feedback. First, I will introduce linear reward case with Hrubandi feedback. So here is a program setting for Hrubandi linear case. So we consider the linear, uh, linear reward function and the Observation is uh, called a full bandy feedback. That is, uh, we can observe the RXD in this form for chosen super arm XD. Uh, here, uh, the underlying the combinatorial optimization, we consider the uh, problem that can be solved in uh, polynomial time. So we can assume that we, we can access the efficient oracle to uh, compute uh, this maximization. So. So here we only consider the fixed confidence setting. So, so I will skip the detailed uh, uh, proposed algorithm, but uh, in higher level, algorithm employs a two step. So for the first phase, we use static sampling based on G optimal design, which minimize the worst case variance of the estimated reward. Then we pick up a subset of super arms from exponentially large space, which includes an optimal super arm with high probability. For the second phase, we can use any linear bandit algorithm to identify the actual uh, optimal wall arm with adaptive sampling. So here we have the sample complexity for the proposed algorithm where uh, delta i denotes the a gap between the uh, expected reward of the optimal super arm and that of the ice largest super arm. So the first term is the sampling cost for adaptive adaptive phase, and the second one uh, is for the static phase. Computational hardness for dealing with combinatorial action is reflected in the factor alpha, which implies the uh, approximation ratio uh, of the G optimal design, although the detailed notation is skipped here. So as can be seen, this sample complexity bound has mild dependence of the minimum gap delta mean. We show that this bound matches a lower bound for pilot family of instances up to log factors. Um, however, this bound includes the minimum eigenvalue of design matrix so which is how to give a raw one, but it implies the trade-off between the sample efficiency and computational efficiency. Okay, so yeah, next I will introduce 
uh, the study which aimed to deal with then subgraph discovery with edge-wide uncertainty by combinatorial bandit approach. Okay, so then subgraph discovery aimed to find a dense component in edge-weighted graph. So this is a fundamental graph mining task with a variety of applications. So example include identifying the molecular complex in protein protein interaction networks, finding social groups in friendship network, um, the detecting communities, and spam link found in web graph. Among a lot of optimization problems arising in dense subgraph discovery, the most popular one would be the densest subgraph problem. In this problem, given an edge-weight undirected graph, we are asked to find the subset of vertices that maximize the uh, so-called degree density, which uh, is defined as the half of the uh, average degree of the subset induced by the subset. The densest subgraph problem can be solved in uh, solved exactly in polynomial time. So owing to solvability and the usefulness of solution, the densest subgraph problem uh, has actively studied and, and many other problem variants uh, like here uh, has been proposed in the literature. So although the most uh, exist model for densest subgraph discovery requires a complete input of the graph data, in many real-world applications, the edge weight need to be estimated from uncertain measurement. For example, consider protein-protein network, uh, where vertices correspond to proteins in a cell, and edge weight represents the uh, similarity or the strength of interaction among the proteins. In the generation process of such networks, the edge weight are estimated through biological experiment using measurement, measuring instrument with some noises. As another example, consider social network where vertices correspond to users of some social networking service and edge weight represents the strength of communication among them. In practice, we often need to estimate the edge weight by observing anonymized communication between users. So yeah, recently, in order to handle the such uncertainty of edge weight, Miao Chang together introduced the robust optimization variant of the densest subgraph problem. In the method, all edges are heavily queried by a sampling oracle that returns an individual edge weight. However, such a uniform sampling procedure for individual edges is often quite costly or sometimes impossible. So in this study, in order to, uh, in order to handle the uncertainty of edge weight, we introduced the normal learning problem for dense circle discovery by incorporating the concept of combinatorial bandit into the densest subgroup problem. While sampling individual edges may be costly in real world applications, it is often reasonable to observe uh, aggregated information of a subset of edges. For example, in the case of a social network, due to some privacy concerns or data usage agreement, it may be impossible even for data owners to, uh, to obtain the estimated number of exchange messages by two specific users while it can be easy to access the information with some large group of users because this procedure requires much less information of individual, uh, individual users. In our model, during the exploration period, the runner chose a subset of edges to sample rather than only single edge and observe the total sum of the random weight in a credit subset. So we investigate both fixed budget setting and fixed confidence setting, but fixed confidence setting can be improved by our later work. So I only introduced the fixed budget setting result here. So here, edge weight function is unknown to the agent. At each round, the agent chooses a set of edges to sample and observe the stochastic total sum of the reward. Then based on the observation, agent will update the sampling strategy. 
So in the fixed budget setting, we are given the fixed number of the sample t. Uh, uh, t is given, which algorithm can use. Then we are asked to find a solution that maximizes the reward function. And at the same time, we wish to minimize the probability of error. But we consider the approximate solution to define error probability in our theoretical analysis. So our concept is that still be greedy in the face of uncertainty. So in design of algorithm, the key idea is to combine the greedy feeling algorithm for the densest subgroup problem and successive, successive reject strategy for the Marachand Bandi. So greedy feeling is an almost linear time 0.5 approximation algorithm for the densest subgroup problem. This is a classical result. So the success reject the reject strategy is one of the optimal sampling strategy for the monotone bandit. In higher level, at each phase, we use the sampling oracle to estimate the edge weight degree, uh, weighted degree, and we will remove the vertex that has a minimum uh, empirical degree. So for proposed method, we provide the theoretical guarantees as following several states. So given any budget T and any latent H weight, weight, weight W, assume that the weight distribution for each edge has R sub tail. Then algorithm uses at most T samples and outputs a solution whose density is the almost 0.5 approximate solution with at least probability in the right hand right, right hand side. So therefore, by setting the probability error to a constant, one can see that the algorithm requires a budget of T, which is polynomial size sample. So we examine the performance of our method in real-world graphs. So the robust sampling as represents a state of the art uh, based on robust optimization and edge sampling oracle. So the oracle represents a greedy feeling with uh, knowledge of latent edge weight exactly. As you can be seen in the table, our method required much less sample for single edges than that of robust sampling, but still can find high quality solutions. So, uh, uh, our reduce the number of samples for single edges compared to that of existing uh, state-of-the-art algorithm. Okay, so next I will cover the nonlinear reward and partial linear feedback in the rest of time. So natural question might be that can we go beyond the curve and uh, can we deal with nonlinear reward? We provide the first solution for such a challenging setting which we call partial linear feedback. So partial linear feedback generates both semi-bounded and clear bounded. Here we consider the deficit uh, continuity for the reward function. So yeah, this model appears in many practical scenarios. So for example, in crowdsourcing, an employer assigns the crowd worker to task according to the worker task performance and wants to find the best matching with limited feedback on a small subset of the complete graph. So in contrast to semi-banded feedback or a full banded feedback, partial linear feedback capture more flexible feedback. For example, we know the feedback from reward or the project A and feedback from project B, respectively. So yeah, I skipped the uh, proposed method details, but for uh, any real function with lip seat or continuity will design a, a static sample which runs in polynomial time to identify the best superarm, a best superarm with the following sample complexity bound. So yeah, we propose the first general, general framework for nonlinear reward and uh, linear feedback and combinatorial structures. So so we can see that the bound has heavy dependence on the minimum gap. And thus, we need to design adaptive algorithm as one of the important future works. Okay, so 
can quickly cover the uh, open problem and conclusion. So given the previous sample complexity, I believe that one of the important future work is to design a good approximation algorithm for experimental design experimental design problems such as G optimal design or E optimal design problem. Because uh, naive approximation as in my our uh, work uh, results in the worst, worst sample complexity. So at the same time, I also think it's important to prove a lower bound or polynomial time uh, algorithm. Um, so there is a lower bound for the pure exploration in linear bandit, uh, but not that the, this lower bound does not consider time complexity. As can be seen, there is still a gap between present day sample complexity bound and uh, this information theoretic lower bound when we consider the combinatorial bandit. And we believe that such a gap is needed for reducing the computational cost. Okay, so this is the last slide. So yeah, this is a, a conclusion. So to deal with uncertainty for combinatorial optimization, we studied the combinatorial bandit problem with limited feedback. So yeah, there are huge problems uh, like that. So yeah, thank you for our uh, listening. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, there's a uh, yeah, recent from the audience. Uh, uh, Zhang Shizhou, you can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Kolo Kolo Li. I'm very interested in your talk, and I have a question about uh, are, you, are you collecting the training data set with label at the, tra at the training runtime, uh, like the DQN algo? Do. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, uh, my question is uh, Are your network uh, or your mast uh, collecting the training examples, tra training data set at the training time, not download? Let's say, uh, uh, so, uh, okay. Okay. I, for example, you you create a virtual world and let the agent in the virtual virtual world do many things. And uh, your net your and your network uh, uh, collecting from the agent for the right decisions and then training your network. Uh, so as I okay, I, I, I don't know. For the question, perhaps yeah. Uh, so uh. Uh, so the audience question is to ask, uh, uh, yeah, in your uh, for the algorithm is to run in some synthetic settings, and uh, yeah, you have to build the yeah synthetic world and then to let your agent to run in the synthetic world, right? Yeah, and yeah, I I, I guess the question is how to build the synthetic environment. Is that is that true or? Oh, my question is. Uh, 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 the traditional uh, neural network needs a training set yet, right? Right, and uh, the tra the tra the training set is download before the training, like uh, the image net or something. And uh, this method is uh, the dynamic create the data set during the training. Uh. Okay, yeah, yeah, his question is, uh, yeah, so how, yeah, I, I guess the, the main question is to how to build the, the synthetic setting to run the agent, yeah, uh, that, that we just uh, create the environment before the running of the agent, or, yeah, we, we just uh, modify the environment during the, the running of the agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I can't answer the question, but uh, to run the reward function, we, we can utilize the neural network. So as in the uh, recent uh, work, I present uh, using the neural tangent funnel to uh, capture the reward function, which is a nonlinear function. So, so not not uh, using the not using the assumption or linear deficit continuity in this as in this work but so yeah so this is a very interesting direction so maybe I can uh, I can I hope that I can hear your opinion with the data 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, I think we can talk later. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your great question. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, hi, uh, Dr. Kruki, I have one question yeah, about the result. So you mainly talk about the result uh, for the setting of pure exploration, right? Yeah. Hello? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you mainly talk about the uh, the results in the pure exploration. Yeah, in the measure for pure exploration, you talk about the capacity or under the fixed confidence or fixed budget setting. So I wonder whether the result or the under the regret. Yeah. So so you think what are the uh, difference in the difficulties? Uh, so I have not uh, worked on the regret minimization, but uh, uh, <laughs> in the regret minimization, uh, we can deal with the NP hard problem of the underlying underlying optimization. But in the pure exploration setting, so essentially we need to compute the uh, empirically based super arm and the second best super arm to check the uh, stopping condition. So like based on the LUCB uh, approach, but the uh, pure exploration setting. So, uh, so th this is because the pure exploration setting uh, has a difficulty to deal with NP hard program. While the regret minimization framework, so we can consider the alpha regret. So using the alpha approximation oracle, so we can cover the uh, many class of combinatorial optimization as underlying optimization. But yeah, pure exploration, uh, this is a difficulty, I think. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I I see. I see. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Actually, uh, yeah, any there's other? There's another. There's a oh, chat box. Uh, she, uh, Shitong has uh, one question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know oh, this. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Shitong, you yeah. yeah, you can ask. Oh, maybe I can ask directly. So thanks for the great talk. So I have a like a quick question on page eleven. So, uh, so in page eleven, you use uh. The combination of the uh, G-optimal design and the UCB method, right? So, yes. so what is the motivation of to use this combination? Why not uh, just use the G-optimal design to do the exploration? And so, so this is my question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not, not using it only. So, uh, so we got uh. To deal with the uh, uh, to full bandit linear feedback, essentially we need a kind of least square uh, linear regression, linear regression. Then we uh, construct mm -hmm. the linear square estimator. So then the uh, we we suffered from the kind of variance. So the GD optimal design mm -hmm. aims to the minimize the maximum the prediction variance. So uh, so this this is uh, used for this is essentially used for the uh, UCB algorithm because the UCB algorithm uses the confidence bands. The co confidence bands correspond to the kind of this uh, maximum variance. Oh, okay, I see. Thank you. I will like look at your paper for details. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a time for us to move on to the uh, next uh, uh, speaker. Yeah, so that's uh, thanks to Dr. Kuruki again. Yeah, thanks for the nice talk. Yeah. Thank you.